It's The Real News Network. I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. In the race for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination, several candidates have criticized Vice President Joe Biden for his support for the war in Iraq. And in early February, in New Hampshire, Biden tried to parry the attacks by saying that he was duped by President George W. Bush and now regrets his support for the war. I made a mistake. I said it 14 years ago. I trusted George Bush to keep his word. He said he was not going to go into Iraq. He said he was only using this to unite the United Nations to insist we get inspectors in to see what Saddam was doing. Neither the other candidates nor the mo debate moderators ever followed up on the issue to point out just how instrumental Biden was in making the Iraq war possible. A new documentary titled Worth the Price, Joe Biden and the Launch of the Iraq War does just that. Here's a clip from the documentary of one of Biden's speeches in support of the war. The objective is to compel Iraq to destroy its illegal weapons of mass destruction and its programs to develop and produce missiles and more of those weapons. Saddam is dangerous. The world would be a better place without him. But the reason he poses a growing danger to the United States and its allies is that he possesses chemical and biological weapons and is seeking nuclear weapons. And unlike uh, my, uh, my colleague from West Virginia and Maryland, I do not believe this is a rush to war. I believe it's a march to peace and security. Even nine months after the Iraq, Iraq war vote, Biden said he continued to support Bush and his vote for the war. The President of the United States is a bold leader and he is popular. The stakes are high and the need for leadership is great. I wish he'd use some of his stored up popularity to make what I admit is not a very popular case. But I and many others will support him. Nine months ago, I voted with my colleagues to give the President of the United States of America the authority to use force and I would vote that way again today. The Iraq war destabilized the entire Middle East, wasting up to $6 trillion, killing as many as 1 million Iraqi citizens, over 4,500 US soldiers, and 1,500 military contractors, and wounding tens of thousands of US personnel. Joining me now to discuss the Biden documentary is its director and producer, Mark Weisbrot. Also, he is the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thanks for joining us again, Mark. Thanks for inviting me, Gregory. So let's start with the main topic of the film. Just how involved was Biden in making the Iraq war happen? I mean, Biden generally acts as if he's, as if the only thing that he did for uh, the war was to vote for it, which passed the Senate in a vote of 77 to 23, with 29 out of 50 Democratic senators voting in favor. Now, what was Biden's role in actually making this happen? Well, he had the most important role of any elected official outside of uh, George W. Bush and, and Dick Cheney. He was the one who pushed it through the Senate. And, you know, you saw the, you posted one of the arguments he made, but it wasn't even his voice that was most important. It was his control over who the Senate got to hear. And, and also that meant a lot of what the media got to hear as well. So he was the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and he chose all 18 witnesses and he chose witnesses who uh, mostly, one after another, tried to justify the war and promoted a whole number of false narratives, the weapons of mass destruction, nuclear weapons uh, program they talked about. They even talked about and put it in the resolution itself, uh, the, some, this uh, mythical connection between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda, which was, as the film describes, uh, ridiculous. And they, you got to remember, this was to October, well, July to October 2002. And this is a time not that far from the, uh, the catastrophe of September 11th. And so they were really playing on these fears like the Bush administration was. So could it have passed the Senate without all the things that he did uh, to control the debate uh, and use his influence, I'm not sure, but he definitely played a huge uh, role. And you can imagine if he had gone the other way and tried to stop it, it would it could have possibly stopped the war. Hmm. Now, as we saw in that clip earlier, Biden repeatedly apologized for his vote, and he seems to argue that that should be good enough 
to leave the matter alone. What do you think? Just how relevant is Biden's support for the war and what he did? Uh, how relevant is that for the campaign, his campaign to become the Democratic Party's presidential nominee? Well, I think it's huge. I mean, first of all, what does it say if there's no accountability at all? If somebody can start this war that killed you know, thousands of U.S. Uh, soldiers and by the best estimates, uh, as many as a million uh, Iraqis and made a mess out of the Middle East uh, and, and parts of North Africa spreading war and terrorism everywhere and really created this cycle of violence uh, that continues to this day and is used to justify more wars and endless wars. I think this is something that it, it, it shouldn't, it should be disqualifying uh, for anybody to run for president or for the nomination of the largest political party in this country. But, um, I mean, the, U the United States isn't currently facing any wars except the one in Iran. So, um, I mean, as a possibility. So, in, in what context, I mean, would this uh, be an issue? Well, I mean, first of all, we're still in Iraq as well. But uh, I think that the context, this context is so huge. I mean, first of all, uh, President Trump almost got us in a war just recently with Iran uh, by ordering the assassination of uh, General Soleimani. And he might have a war even before the election. So war is really, uh, these endless wars are also are a, a huge issue, but they're even more than that. You know, for 50 years, you've had the peace movement rightly uh, pointing out that uh, every time you build another, uh, fighter jet, you're giving up on health care for thousands of people. But it's even worse than that now, because now you have a point where, and we've talked about this a little on the show before, you're at a point where the leaders of the so-called national security state are planning a shift from, and, and beginning a shift from what they call the war on terror to uh, great power rivalry. And that means an arms race with uh, China. And China, as you know, is already, uh, their economy is 30% larger than ours by the measure that economists use to make these uh, international comparisons and will be twice as big as us now uh, in ten, in, within 10 years. Now, we had an arms race with the Soviet Union when it was only a quarter the size of the United States. We've never faced anything like this. And so this would, you know, this would preclude anything like a Green New Deal or any, really almost any uh, conversion towards uh, zero carbon emissions, any uh, Medicare for all, all of these things we'd have to sacrifice if we really want to uh, build this military capacity to continue uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, supremacy in, in the world. And that's, uh, that's the dominant view right now in our uh, foreign policy establishment. So if you give Biden a pass for creating this horribly destructive war that everybody now realizes was not only built on lies, but was a horrible failure from any point of view, then you're basically saying that business on, as usual is, is okay. And you're excluding most of the things uh, that people want to do going forward. Mm. Now, it seems surprising to me that uh, the other Democrats running for the presidency have made relatively little out of Biden's role. That is, they certainly point out every time that uh, he voted in favor of it, but once he apologizes, they pretty much leave it at that and never push him uh, on uh, that he really did a lot more, just as your documentary shows. So why do you think this is being ignored by both the candidates and also by the media? Well, it's interesting. I think, you know, First of all, there's a general prejudice not to talk much about foreign policy among the candidates because that's not what most people vote on. Second of all, you know, this is a country with the historical memory of a fish in our political culture, at least. And so, you know, this is just history. But I think there's one other thing. Uh, the media is not talking about it either, even though they did, you know, CNN and New York Times. And I left this out of the film because I wanted to focus on what Biden actually did, but they actually accused him of lying about his positions on the war 
uh, following after the war uh, started. And I think the media is, they tend to ignore what Congress does, even though it's kind of ironic because in this country, the legislature has more of a role in foreign policy than it has in, in most other countries, including almost all the, the high income countries. And yet you don't see the, the, the media kind of treats war as though it's the prerogative and the responsibility uh, and the right uh, of the president and they leave Congress out of it as much as they can. It's been a struggle to get them to report, for example, on the uh, historic votes in the Senate and the House that was led by uh, Bernie Sanders in the Senate uh, on the War Powers Resolution uh, to order the U.S. military to uh, get out of uh, the war in Yemen, which has killed hundreds of thousands of people. And that ought to be a, a, a major issue in the media. That, both houses of Congress. We have a constitution, you know, Article One of the Constitution assigns to the Congress the responsibility uh, for allowing uh, war or declaring war, uh, but also allowing it. And not it's not the president's responsibility. And yet the media pretty much ignores that uh, violation of the Constitution. So I think that's part of the general prejudice. Of the of the media, it isn't just that they'd be covering up for him, or they have a position on it so much. It's is more that they they tend to ignore the role of Congress in in these wars. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there for now. I was speaking to Mark Weisbrot, co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research and director of the uh, documentary Worth the Price: Joe Biden and the Launch of the Iraq War. The documentary, actually, I should mention, was narrated by the actor and Real News uh, Network board member, Danny Glover. Uh, we'll provide a link to the documentary together with this interview. Thanks again, Mark, for having joined us today. Thank you, Gary. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.